All right. Hey, everybody. This is Mr. Munson, and we're looking at Unit 2 Circles, continuing with that. Today is concept number three. And so if you looked at your student learning map, uh, you would see that concept number three is segment lengths, vertex outside the circle. So we're going to be studying how to um, calculate the segment lengths when it's associated with a circle. So if you look at these um, three drawings down below, one of them doesn't have their vertex outside the circle. Remember, a vertex is basically where some lines meet and form angles. So hopefully you identified quickly that this one here has the vertex on the inside of the circle. And so that will not be the kind of problem we're dealing with. It'll be problems like these, where um, the lines meet outside the circle and form the vertex outside the circle. All right, let's get started. Pretty simple section. Okay, so let's take a look at this drawing. This is going to be our basic drawing for any time the vertex is outside the circle. You're going to see through this lesson that there's a couple of variations on this, but they all come down to the vertex is outside the circle. So go ahead and draw that onto your paper as your notes. And I want to identify that there are some <clears throat> uh, pieces that I want to label uh, with um, lowercase letters. And those lowercase letters represent the lengths of these segments, okay? They're not points because points are always capital. Those lowercase letters are like variables like X and T and Y. They're always lowercase. So in this drawing, uh, the segment from A to B, the large A to the large B, that outside segment has a length of A. And going down that same line, you'll see that lowercase B represents the length inside the circle there or from C to B. Same thing happens with C and D down below. So here's what I want you to know is <clears throat> there's a relationship that we can write um, that will help us calculate those segments. So if we know three of those segments, then we can find the fourth. Um, and so let's look at writing an equation. What's really kind of cool is um, there's this real quick phrase that I'll teach you in just a bit to help you memorize the relationship. But uh, to help us get there, what I want you to know is that E, and I'm going to use lowercase e, represents the entire length of from A to C, okay? So I would just simply say A is E plus B. Well, that's what I've written here. And the same thing happens with um, F down below. F represents the two pieces added together, the whole thing. Okay, so up in the box, I have these pieces. E is equal to A plus B, the whole thing, and F equals C plus D, the whole thing. Uh, so the relationship I want you to know for now is that A times E equals C times F. Okay, so here's the thing. It's going to be hard for you to memorize um, this um, relationship because the letters that we're using are arbitrary. They pertain to the drawing that I have here. So, you know, in later drawings, you're going to be dealing with uh, other letters. There might be X's and Y's for the variables instead of A, B, C's, and then these E's. And so the next thing I show you is going to be a simple phrase I want you to memorize to help you understand how to do these problems where the vertex is outside the circle. Okay? To help us with that, I'm going to remove some of this drawing. Okay, so take a look at A and C in the drawing. And recognize that I could use the word outside, meaning the outside pieces of the problem. Okay? And that E and F, if you remember, represented the whole length of the segment, um, the two pieces added together. So the idea that I want you to understand is this. Simply put, the relationship that we have up at the top here, A times E equals C times F, is the idea of the outside piece times the whole thing is equal to the outside piece times the whole thing. Okay? So we have two, two segments that we're dealing with that meet and create a vertex outside the circle. This outside equals the whole thing equals the outside times the whole thing is the relationship that we're always going to apply to these kind of problems. To help you understand this, we're going to do some example problems, and I'm going to leave you with try it problems. Okay, let's look at this example problem. Go ahead and write it into your notes, of course. And let's apply our relationship of outside equals the whole thing equals outside times the whole thing. I'm going to write that in first. 
And then I'm going to just, that's my relationship. Now I'm going to start putting the pieces into it. Okay, so the whole thing for the top segment is 3 plus 6, and the whole thing for the bottom one is x plus 4. It's not x times 4. If I was measuring that length, uh, it would be the x segment plus the 4 segment. We learned that in unit 1. Uh, two smaller segments can add together to give us larger segments. Sometimes I see students multiplying that, and that doesn't make sense at all. Okay, so start simplifying this, and we'll just solve it like a regular equation. And there you have it. X is equal to 9.5. So another question I could ask is this. And if that was the case, I'd just simply plug it into the problem. And there I have it. All right, moving on. All right, so we see this problem. A little bit of a variation, um, but it is still a vertex outside the circle kind of problem. So let's write down a relationship. Notice that I keep on advocating that for you to write down your relationship without any numbers in it, making sure you're starting off right. And then we're just going to plug the numbers in. Now, what I want you to do is kind of think this one through on your own. There's a bit of a twist to this one, but it's okay. So if you get stuck on something, just kind of come back to me. Put me on pause, and I'm going to show you the work. And there you have it. So if you were anything like me when I first started doing these problems, that came to be a problem for me. The whole thing, I don't see the whole thing. Actually, 8 is the whole thing. It's the outside piece and the whole thing. So it makes it nice and simple for us. And then because I didn't forget to plug in, that's my final answer there. AD is equal to 16. Moving on to the next scenario. So, uh, just to, to remind ourselves, we were dealing with a secant and a tangent this time. So we had two secants, and we had a secant and a tangent. The next one, tangent and tangent. All right, here's the example. So what I want you to do is go ahead and do this one on your own. Keep in mind what we did last time with the tangent. Go ahead and write the relationship first, and then start filling in the information. We'll call this side here x. So I'm assuming you're going to put me on pause here and do the work yourself. Then come back and see me. Okay, you might have got to this point and we're stuck. If you didn't, you kept on moving. I'll have your answer in just a second. Fantastic for those. If you got stuck here, we're trying to find out what x is equal to. And right now we have what x squared is equal to. To undo that squaring, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Okay? When I take the square root of a something being squared, they cancel each other out. And that leaves me with just an x underneath here. So take the square root of 144, and I get 12. So x is equal to 12, and therefore bc is equal to 12. Hey, listen, this is no coincidence. Really, this is um, not necessary. What I want you to know is there's a little shortcut to this. And that is, whenever you're dealing with a tangent and a tangent meeting as a vertex, Whatever one side is, the other side has to be the same. So if this had been 47, then I could have said x is equal to 47 very quickly. If I had said 3x plus 5 was one side of it and the other side was 4x minus 7, the relationship is still the same. I could plug it into this um, outside times the whole thing equals outside times the whole thing. And it becomes a very big, complicated, I have to remember how to FOIL. I don't know if you remember that from algebra. But simply put, all we got to do is just realize that these two segments are congruent when you're dealing with two tangents on the outside of the circle. All right, that's it. Let's look at our try. There you have it, a pretty short presentation. Go ahead and do those problems there. Bring them in class on a separate piece of paper, of course, with your name, your date, and your period number at the top. Have it ready at the beginning of class, and there you have it, under 10 minutes.